In this video, I'll show you how I made this camper out of this cargo trailer. After being reintroduced to a love of camping in 2019, I decided to convert this little cargo trailer with its unfortunate color scheme into a camper. After some very quick, rough planning, I got to work. The first task was to install adjustable stabilizing jacks on the rear of the camper. These, in combination with the jack on the trailer tongue, provide three points on the ground making it pretty easy to level the trailer. After ripping out all of the original interior plywood and cardboard off the walls and ceiling, I got to work on the interior. The first step was to install electrical boxes where I wanted outlets, switches, and the light fixture. Once that was done, I installed one inch thick foil-faced foam insulation in between the wall studs. As the wiring was being run in the wall cavities, I also started lining the interior with new 3 8 inch beaded plywood. I thought the natural wood look was nice, but I was ultimately overruled later in the build. Next came one of the most nerve-wracking parts of the build, cutting holes in the walls of the trailer to install the two windows. I first created a template out of some cardboard that had been lining the ceiling. This was then positioned on the wall and taped in place to allow me to mark the line to cut. Once marked, I cut through the outer aluminum skin, the foam insulation, and the interior plywood in one pass with a jigsaw. With the hole cut, the camper windows were installed, with the interior trim ring pulling the outer half tight against the outside of the trailer, creating a good seal. After the first window was done, I repeated the process for the second window. The wire coming out of the left front area is from the 50 amp receptacle I installed through to the outside to bring power into the camper. I also used some scrap beadboard to line the inside of the rear tailgate to make it look nicer. As I mentioned, I was outvoted one vote to one, and the inside of the trailer got a couple coats of a white paint. I'm told it isn't just white, but I'll let you decide. To paint the walls, I used a pressure pot sprayer from Harbor Freight, which made quick work of the job since I wasn't worried about overspray on the old floor or unfinished ceiling. After painting the walls, I began laying out the galley area in the front of the trailer. I set the mini fridge in the center and one of the two 24-inch cabinets next to it to get some dimensions to aid in cutting things to fit into the V-nose. I also made a simple template from scrap wood that fit into the exact angle of the walls at the countertop height to help cut the countertop more accurately. The laminate countertop was a bargain bin find at Menards, a custom order someone never picked up. Using the template, it was cut to fit into the V. The cabinets also needed to be cut down to fit. First, I reinforced the open tops with a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood glued in to close the top of the box. Then I marked out the cut lines and used a combination of my circular saw set to a bevel and a jigsaw to cut the backs of the cabinet. Here is a picture of the cabinets, fridge, and countertop set in place for the first time. With the cabinets sitting in their locations, I placed the breaker box inside the right-hand cabinet. Then I removed the galley components and worked on finishing the wiring to the panel. For the ceiling, I used a white shower liner material. It's textured and moisture resistant, which I thought would be important in case the vent hatch leaked or something. It was cut to fit and installed using some self-tapping screws. After getting a coat of paint, the cabinets were permanently installed by screwing them to the floor using pocket screws and some 1x4 pine cleats that I glued and screwed to the particle board sides before painting. The countertop was then attached to the tops of the cabinets. I had to make a simple wood trim piece for the light fixture because the electrical box in the ceiling stuck down below the ceiling panels. I used my CNC router to cut it out and painted it white to match. Next I turned to the flooring. Using a template made from pieces of red resin paper, I cut sheet vinyl flooring to fit and glued it to the plywood trailer floor. With the floor in place, I fabricated an exhaust port for the air conditioner. This replaced the original vent port that was on the side of the trailer. A threaded plug allows me to cap off the outside of the port during transport or in off-season storage. The portable air conditioner's exhaust hose then connects on the inside. For the queen bed platform, I built a frame out of 2x4s. It was built in two halves to make it easier to get in and out of the trailer. The top was covered with OSB, and the front got painted plywood panels that extended higher than the platform to help retain the mattress. An access hole in the one panel provided a path for the air conditioner hose and access to store items under that half of the bed. We initially used an air mattress, but later upgraded to a foam mattress. With a few finishing touches, like a small TV and trim, the camper was ready for its first camping season. When 
2021 rolled around, I started thinking about upgrades. First on the list was a paint job. I didn't have access to a large shop space anymore at that point, so I opted to roll on gray primer and white paint. Of course, partway through the coat number one on the white paint, the weather and the looming camping season put a halt to progress on the paint. At least the gray and white looks better than the orange and black. Inside, I built a shelf for a small microwave and coffee maker to utilize some of the space above the countertop at the front. I also cut down one of the drawers and reinstalled it with some short 10-inch full extension drawer slides to add some additional storage. On the left-hand side of the countertop, I installed a small sink basin that can drain to the outside to make it possible to wash dishes and such inside the camper in the evenings. Back to the outside, I ordered a 12-foot bag awning to install over the right-hand side of the camper for added shade. I also fabricated a retractable step to replace the wooden step that was carried in the bed of the pickup. Overall, I've been very happy with how the camper has turned out so far. There are plenty of future upgrades on the to-do list, but for now, it's a very functional camper for our outdoor adventures. If you like this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.